So this is what they're gonna tell you. Number one, they're gonna say it costs too much. They're gonna tell you that it's gonna cost $30 trillion over the next 10 years. And they're gonna be pretty much right. Healthcare is expensive and it's gonna cost that kind of money in order to provide decent healthcare for everybody in America. What they won't tell you is that if we do nothing and continue this system, it will cost $34 trillion over the next 10 years. So by going to Medicare for All, we save $4 trillion over 10 years. Then they're gonna talk about rationing and death panels. They're gonna say that uh, uh, the system will inevitably cause lawn lines and people will be choosing who lives and who dies. Well, let me tell you that there's 30,000 Americans who die every year in this country waiting for health care that they will never get because they have no insurance or they have inadequate insurance. More people die in this country from lack of health care than anywhere else in the uh, industrialized world. They will then come up with some crazy story about somebody in Canada who had to wait six months for a hip replacement um, and they had to go through all of these things and maybe they came to the US and somebody heard about it through somebody whose uncle heard about it uh, on Fox News and that will be the big story that everybody is gonna pick up but I would ask that you ask the Canadian people what they feel about their health care system and find out how many Canadians would be willing to trade what they have with its flaws for the American style of health care. Uh, they'll also tell you that the government can't do anything right, that it's going to be like the motor vehicles department with a massive bureaucracy on, on health care. Uh, and this is, I always smile when I hear this one because it's kind of like the pot calling the kettle black. I mean, have you ever had to call for approval for a, uh, a surgery or a medical procedure and talk to somebody who's not even a doctor, maybe in a call center in the Philippines, and they talk about bureaucracy? I mean, we already live under one of the most bureaucratized healthcare system in the world. The government does certain things right, and it's the kind of things that we need them to do for our health care. They're very good at collecting taxes, uh, which is what we need them to do to pay for our health care, and they're very good at sending the checks out. Uh, they've never missed a Social Security check uh, in 75 years, and that's what we need the government to do, to collect the money fairly and to distribute it in an equitable fashion. And uh, That's right up the government's competency level. They're going to tell us about freeloaders. They're going to talk about immigrants and uh, drug addicts and uh, people who don't have healthy lifestyles and eat too much red meat and all of these people that we're going to be asked to support on this health care system. And we have to be prepared for that. We know what divide and conquer mean when we're in our workplace and how the bosses try to divide us uh, against each other in order to play one group off the other. Uh, this is what's going to happen in these health care debates. The system only works when everybody is in and nobody is out. That's what a public health care system does. We've got to be prepared for those divisive attacks. They're going to tell us that you're going to lose what you have. They're going to tell Medicare recipients your Medicare is going to be ruined by expanding it to everybody. They're going to tell people they're going to lose their private insurance. Uh, they don't tell Medicare recipients that in fact their Medicare benefit will be improved. They will no longer need supplemental coverage. Their drug coverage will be in full. Uh, Long-term care will be covered in full. Dental care, optical care, all of the stuff that's not currently covered will be improved. And they don't tell you that when you lose your uh, private insurance, you're trading it off for a system with no co-pays, no deductibles, no co-payments, and no narrow networks. And they're going to talk about the quality of care. I would maintain that care will only improve in a system where we have continuity of care, where you can go to the same doctor and have your illness treated by someone who knows, knows your medical history for multiple years, where the incentives are to keep you healthy rather than to kick you off the health care plan if you're sick. It will be a much more humane system of health care coverage. And then they're going to say, how do we trust the politicians to uh, keep the system honest and to deliver us health care? The politicians are untrustworthy. And I, I tell them, you absolutely have a point. The only way we're going to be able to trust those politicians is to hold their feet to the fire. The day we win this fight for national health care is the day that the uh, other side is going to look to weaken the system that we just won. And we're going to have to stay active and stay mobilized in our unions and our communities in order to keep this system honest and to keep it running for the benefit of working people.